Redditors who salvaged their marriage from the brink of divorce. What's your story and how's it going now? Husband played wow. A lot. We had two kids. I was miserable and controlling. I went to therapy for myself and got some emotional tools on how to deal with life. It was mind blowing. I also learned how to not let fear dictate my decisions. Husband noticed. I basically went from controlling and nagging and a mean sobbing mess to calm, independent and in some ways less caring. He got nervous and agreed to go to therapy. He went for two sessions. Basically he got his view of reality called into question. I swear our therapist was like a non-evil Hannibal Lecter. He was good at getting to the heart of things but both myself and my husband were desperate for change. My husband stepped up. And I stepped down from trying to micromanage his life. Life is good. Most of our problems came from his family full of awful, abusive, intrusive, boundary stomping buttholes. We moved 1000 miles away and no longer speak to them. We're happy now. Anthropologists think a main reason that people spread so far across the world was less to do with scare resources and more about inter-tribal argument. Basically, terrible families and people like you leaving them are why humanity spread across the globe. I caught my wife chatting with someone else online. When I called her on it, she said she knew I was talking to someone else too. We had been emotionally cheating on each other because we felt like we weren't getting what we needed from the marriage. We realized that if we just took the effort that we were spending on the other people and spent it on each other, we'd be happy and getting what we needed. Now our marriage is really amazing. Going through something similar. Still working on it and I'm going to therapy soon to work on a lot of crap I should have taken care of a long time ago but it made us realize how much we want to be together and work it out. Most days are good but we still have moments. I definitely think therapy will help. I had surgery. I know it sounds weird. I'm a female. Make the most money. Work the most, etc. My husband also works but has very few skills and smokes weed a lot because of back pain. So anytime he does get an interview for something better, they drug test and he doesn't get the job. We also have a son with autism. We aren't having more kids. When my son turned 8 I got my tubes cut out so I couldn't. Every day is exhausting and honestly, neither of us were happy. I never wanted sex because I was tired. He wanted it all the time. He snapped about everything. I shut down about everything. We had our 10 year anniversary and I knew I wanted a divorce. I has a breast reduction because of pain issues that were affecting my work. That surgery is serious stuff. I prepared having to go at my recovery with no help. I was delusional. I was a mess afterwards. I didn't want to ask him for help at all. He turned into a different person. He helped me in the bathroom, took me in the shower to help me, drove me to all of my appointments, made me food, checked on me every 20 minutes. Never once did he get impatient with me. Four weeks after my surgery I felt really lovely from my surgery. I was in a good mood. I liked how I looked in the mirror. I asked him if he liked how I looked. He looked like a dog staring at a treat. I told him I wanted sex. Ever since then, things are totally different. I don't know exactly what happened. Maybe him realizing that attention to me matters and showing care. And I realized I needed to give up control. But now we make a little date time. We have sex one two times a week. It had been about once a month before. We laugh with each other. I talk to him when I'm frustrated instead of trying to solve everything by myself. But it's pretty awesome. So in conclusion. Comma I told him I wanted sex. Go back 17 years ago. We had a young son. He was my dream child. I lost my focus on my husband and centered entirely on my son. My husband never said much. I was so tired too. All I wanted to do after working 9-10 hours was sleep. He had a job he hated and works 10 hours a day too. We forgot to be in love. Period. I nagged a lot and he just ignored me. I caught him telling our problems to a stranger on the internet. I asked for a divorce. It was around January. I said we would let my son finish the school year and I would leave in June. After that, we coexisted as friends. We had been together for 16 years, so that wasn't hard. Our parents knew we were divorcing and they didn't understand because we were such good friends. Around March we were bored. 
We wanted to go out to dinner and a movie. I asked my mom to babysit. It was just his friends. I actually took the time to get ready. He did too. We went to dinner and then the movie. By habit. I just grabbed his hand. He never said anything, but just stroked the back of my hand and never let go. We got back into the car. It was late, so we let our son stay overnight. I don't know what happened that night, but I felt something I had never felt before. I was holding on to my best friend and I wasn't going to let go. We went home and just held each other. Divorce was never mentioned again. In my own head I realized that I had to put him first. He needed me too. I balanced my time and he learned to give me the reassurance that I needed to feel loved, as I currently watch him sleep, with a 7 year old between us. I know that our marriage is about as perfect as a marriage can be. We have both forgiven and accepted each other's faults. My advice to you. 1. Make one date a month. Make it special. 2. Every 3-4 months. Plan to go out of town for a night. Act like teenagers. I can't tell you how much I need these nights. We go to concerts, ball games, casinos, or even just camping. 5. Don't argue about something that won't matter in one month. If he didn't take out the trash, will that really matter? 4. Learn to enjoy each other's bodies. I had gained weight and lost all self-esteem. Once I realized that he wasn't looking for perfection, just attention, things changed. I wasn't happy with what I looked like and oh have slowly improved. My son is getting married. His soon to be wife told him he wanted marriage just like his parents had. THST told me everything I needed to know. We had made it. This is going to be a long one for ya. I struggle with physical affection. I am very verbally affectionate. But for my husband it wasn't enough. This wasn't the cause, but an instigator. My husband has bipolar depression with compartmentalization syndrome. For a very long time he refused to admit he needed help. We had many up and downs during the beginning of the marriage, but always kept trying. He finally had a full breakdown and admitted himself to a mental facility. When he got out, things were amazing. He was getting treatment for most of his illness, except the depression. He lost his job, it was only me working, and he was home with our son doing nothing. He found a woman online. I found out and he told me he didn't love me anymore. I didn't kick him out. He had nowhere to go, no job, no money, and we had a child and he needed to be in his life. I made him move into our guest room and I'll live in a state where there isn't any legal separation per the courts. So we made our own agreement. Obviously the online thing went nowhere, and I told him flat out, no dating, online or IRL, until he moved out. I was not going to pay for him to frick around on my dollar. We treated each other as roommates. Then July of 2016, we found a mass on my ovary. It might have been cancer. It's not. Thank the gods, but the scare made me realize a lot about myself. How I didn't treat him like the love of my life. How being affectionate wasn't just sex and there was more I could do than just say I love you. The scare also kicked him into gear. He worked harder with his therapist, realized he did love me. It was his depression going and treated that was a huge cloud on his emotions. So we started slow. Dating again from square one. Two years later we are doing amazingly. I am way more affectionate. He is way more verbal with what is going on in his head. And we still date. Thank you for sharing your story. Long story short, I had a crappy upbringing which led to me being a crappy young adult with no idea about how to be a good partner. For years I never lived up to being even 10% of the wife my husband deserved. After a really bad fight one weekend about 6 years in, he was done. My devastation was all encompassing. I laid in bed for 2 days straight sobbing and wanting to die. He decided that he wanted to continue trying, and when he told me, I fell to my knees sobbing. I don't deserve him, but I am fighting every day to be the best wife I can be. Things have been better in the 1.5 years since. I have sought treatment for my depression and started getting serious about taking responsibility for the things I have done wrong in our marriage, and I plan fun and interesting dates for us at least a few times a month. We have worked on the friendship side of our relationship, and that has been game changing. So overall I am optimistic but I still carry a lot of guilt for not treating him the way he deserved for so long. This is really good. The difference between the love infatuation side of marriage and the friendship I like you side is so subtle and does not get talked about often enough. 
We had two kids and diapers and we were working opposite schedules so that we could care for them without resorting to daycare. He called me at work to say we're both not happy, we should separate. And, without any emotional tears or anything, I said I'm not freaking doing this alone so get over yourself. Then I hung up the phone. Tomorrow is my 30th anniversary. The kids are grown and successful and we love each other more than we ever have. My wife tried to break up with me when we were dating. I declined the offer. Worked out great for us. We just got married a week ago. Sitting on our honeymoon reading this thread. It is so helpful to read what others did to pull themselves out of these situations. You worry about how your relationship evolves and hope it will be strong. This initiated a wonderful discussion between my husband and I. So thank you all. Congratulations. I thought I couldn't possibly love my husband any more than on our wedding day. My heart was so full. I had the same worries as you about how our love would change over time. Nine years later and that love seems like a drop in a bucket compared to the love I have for him now. I hope the same for you in your marriage. My wife and I got married fairly quickly. We both didn't have a great upbringing. We didn't really have an idea of what a healthy relationship should look like. Both of us had abusive relationships in the past. I was unable to effectively communicate my feelings to her. She always thought that she needed to prepare for the worst. So when we would have an argument, I would shut down. She would reach out to ex-boyfriends looking for reassurance. I found out about her talking to other men several times. The last time I had had enough. I told her I wanted a divorce. She asked me to go to counseling with her. The first session was a train wreck. I almost left her that night and she thought we weren't going to make it. After a few sessions and some very hard conversations we learned to communicate. I learned to open up. She learned that her behavior was destructive. It definitely wasn't easy to overcome and I would say it's a miracle that we're still together. I'm so very glad that we worked it out. Warning it's long. Been married almost 10 years almost lost my marriage twice due to my instability and crazy mood swings. I was cycling between mania and depression about 7. One stroke 2 years ago. My husband was stressed out dealing with me. A bad church situation as a preacher and 2 jobs. We were strained and we were so close to just giving up. We pretty much were roommates for a few months then he got a job opportunity in another state. Which took stress off of him. And my mood settled down. We thought all was well I was controlling my moods as best I could without a diagnosis. 5 years ago, new state, I was working. He was working we hardly saw each other, my mood and health started declining again. I took it out on him by distancing myself, staying with my family and just being a witch. We were within probably weeks of divorce again and I got a tip to go to a doctor, get checked out and then see a therapist. I saw a doctor got a diagnosis of bipolar disorder type 1. Started medication and seeing a therapist. I also was dealing with seizures of unknown origin and once I got my diagnosis and started therapy I was given tips on how to manage my mood swings. Started medication and rebuilding our marriage. A month after I started all of the medication. Got my seizures under control their stress induced time on medication for it still I found out I was pregnant after an infertility diagnosis. My husband and I focused on rebuilding our relationship and focusing on being husband and wife and becoming parents. It took a lot of hard work on both of our parts and tons of soul searching but we made it through it. We met and married in 4 months of meeting. So we struggled especially as he is 9 years older than me I was in my 20s when we married and he was in his 30s so it was a maturity on my part and as I grew as person. Dealt with chronic illness and now mental illness it changed me. And it took both of us recognizing it and understanding that it changed our marriage that we were able to survive the near split twice. Now we are stronger than ever like it's absolutely amazing how far we've come in almost 10 years of marriage. We made it and we work together. He's my accountability partner making sure my meds are taken daily. Checks in after my appointments it's wonderful looking back how much we almost gave up. I'll bite. Marriage was a crap show. We were both still immature in several ways. Things got bad. There was lying. Fighting. Yelling. Verbal and psychological abuse. Divorce was used as a threat. And so was custody of our kids. Husband was having an emotional affair with his ex-wife. We reached a tipping point when during an argument in which I was told my opinion was wrong. And I needed to change it or be gone within the week. 
I left the next day, we fought more, we both filed for divorce. We had one hearing where we talked about custody to the judge. Time passes, my lawyer had everything ready to finalize it and all it needed was my signature. I opted not to have it filed and not to sign. During the three years we were separated, we continued to talk on the phone. I let him see our kids as much as possible. We were hundreds of miles apart, 12 hours driving. My car would not have made the trip. His was in better condition. He may have been a crap husband, but he's always been a good dad. We talked, and talked. We both sought therapy individually. We grew up. Eventually he moved back, and I moved back in. We've continued to work on our marriage so we never get to where we were. As for right now, things are okay. We're not perfect people, but we're making it through. Good on you for working on it. I shared my story in RF Mitchest a few days ago, but I feel like it should be shared here, too. I'm 34M, married to 33F. Long story short, I was a very heavy drinker for 15 plus years, verbally abusive to my wife when drunk. Wife lost father from cancer the same year we married, lost to her mother the following year due to unknown cause, possibly heart issue. We had a kid, June 2016. My wife's sister gave birth, then unexpectedly, her sister died a week later. I started drinking more heavily and ramped up my verbal abuse. My wife suppressed her feelings and said she was used to death now. End of August 2016. She says she wants a marriage break. I didn't want a break. Early September 2016 I decide to quit drinking cold turkey, average 15 drinks a day down to zero, and start working out. One week later, I find out she's having an affair. The affair continued for 6 months on and off, but I maintained my sobriety and tried to convince her I changed the whole time. She never believed me and expected me to revert back to my old ways. December 2016, we were headed for divorce. February 2017, the affair had ended a month prior, she's gone through a lot of therapy at this point, she started going weekly in November 2016, and we decided to try and give our marriage another shot, we did marriage consoling B weekly and started to get to know the new us, individually and as a couple, that April, I started school again after a 10 year hiatus, today, the 27th of September 2018. I'm down to 170 pounds from 220. This weight was actually all lost in the first couple months after finding out about the affair. I'm 80% of the way done with my bachelor's degree. Wife and I are more in love than we ever have been since knowing that 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 I did it in silence and I'm dang proud of myself two years ago at this time. I wouldn't have believed this was possible, but I pushed through and I'm making good decisions. Finally, I was a dong and didn't deserve the beautiful woman who put up with my daily drinking and verbal abuse for over 5 years. She shouldn't have cheated and maybe some think I should have cut my ties, but I made the choices I made and I stand by them. I love her. My wife and I finally found our true selves and our marriage is stronger than it's ever been. We were both in the wrong for different reasons, but we worked hard and fixed everything that we could. Just wanted to get this off my chest because I feel accomplished. I'm finally happy with my life and where it's going for the first time since youth. Keep your head up. Most bulls in life is just a phase unless you make it bigger than it should be. Stay focused. Thank you for sharing. Congrats on your sobriety. That is no small accomplishment. Over 20 years the relationship became more and more emotionally abusive, which I didn't recognize until I saw a psychologist. She helped me, and also suggested that my husband was suffering from depression. A very serious ultimatum forced him to get psychiatric help, but it took a few years to find the right doctor, get him on the right meds, and for us both to understand our roles in the messed up relationship we were in and to learn to communicate effectively. Seven or eight years later I can honestly say we are happy together. I would never advise anyone to stay in an abusive relationship, but if you really can't leave at least get professional help. Threads like these make me feel like I'm the weird one because cheating is not something I could bring a relationship back from. Words of Stephen R. Covey from the book. 7 Habits of Highly Successful People This changed my paradigm about my marriage. 
My wife and I just don't have the same feelings for each other we used to have. I guess I just don't love her anymore and she doesn't love me. What can I do? The feeling isn't there anymore I asked. That's right. He reaffirmed. And we have three children we're really concerned about. What do you suggest? Love her. I replied. I told you. The feeling just isn't there anymore. Love her. You don't understand. The feeling of love just isn't there. Then love her. If the feeling isn't there, that's a good reason to love her. But how do you love when you don't love? My friend. Love is a verb. Love, the feeling, is a fruit of love, the verb. So love her. Serve her. Sacrifice. Listen to her. Empathize. Appreciate. Affirm her. Are you willing to do that? This is great advice. We began to communicate more effectively. I used to hold things back or not say something that bothered me to avoid an argument. It would just bottle and explode. Talk things out. It makes all the difference. My wife and I did go full divorce, and have been remarried just shy of a year after a year apart. We had a multitude of problems. She thought I was controlling. As did I with her. After our daughter was born, she had postpartum depression and it came out in the form of super butthole to me and crazy perfectionism. I didn't have the tools to deal with it so I shut her out and it spiraled out of control from there. After a year apart, we both realized what each person had been contributing to each other's lives and talked it out. It's far too much to type but both of us had a lot of growing to do. We're doing much better. We had some issues. Truth be told they weren't even big ones but we had no idea how to work through them. Her from past very abusive relationships and I from past relationship cheating and disowned from family. We both obviously loved each other beyond anything else but were incredibly unhappy. When we tried to talk it turned into fights and tuning each other out. The unending fights that would get nowhere turned into just ignoring the problems and we just avoided each other. One day I woke up to go to kitchen and she was packing her stuff to leave and she had started divorce papers. I was devastated and it made me realize we were getting divorced over such small matters. I refused to let it go through and she finally agreed to try again on account we read this book together. I hate therapy being betrayed by my therapist in past and self-help books but was desperately trying to get this worked out. So I agreed to both. I attribute our reconciliation 100%. Besides our efforts, to this book, it completely opened my eyes and why was going on and how we had to communicate. I buy it for every newlywed couple friends I know. One book each. It's science back not opinion which rally helped me believe. Full of workbooks to do together. We went chapter by chapter together and talked and did the exercises and we learned so much about each other even after being together over 10 years. It truly saved us and we know how to communicate and even more importantly know the warnings of what makes an unhealthy relationship. I strongly encourage everyone to read it. The 7 Principles for Making Marriage Work by John M. Gottman PhD. Thank you. My dad took drugs for decades. Before I was born and before they married. In 2017 my mom was tired of a lot of things. She never said what it was. And went to Missouri with a friend no one knew about. My dad stopped doing drugs that day. When she came back we took my dad to rehab and now he's been clean ever since then. We're missing a critical part of this tale. I don't know that we're super far from the brink. But Luong's story. And sadly. Familiar to many short. He was a sneaky drunk. It is boozing and fallout from me. He went to rehab. I took him there. It was voluntary on his part, but one of the most hellish trips of my life. Some days, I remind myself that staying married to him, working through my resentment and anger and legitimate distrust is my choice. I can either do it or not. What do I want to choose? He knows that I am making this active choice. He chooses not to use alcohol, to work on himself to do all the things that help him stay sober. That is his choice. Knowing it's a choice for me is liberating. I've seen what it looks like when my spouse is gone, when I'm raising our kid on one income, alone. I've seen it. I've done it. I know it's not the end of the world. If I choose that path, I'll be okay. So for now, I'm choosing to do some hard work on myself, to acknowledge and own the hurt and anger and resentment, and to work through it. Because even if we don't end up married at the end of the day, I don't want that crap hanging over my head, or his. Neither of us deserve it. Day by motherfucking day.
Awesome. And you're right. It is day by the fucking day. I am bisexual. And a lot more on the lesbian end of that spectrum than straight. I was raised in a very religious setting. Though. And grew up believing I was going to hack for my attraction to women. So I spent a long time trying to prove to myself and the world that I really was straight. By the time I even admitted my sexuality to myself. I was married and had two kids. My husband was. And is. My best friend, but I wasn't in love with him. I wrote in my journal about wanting a divorce so I could be with women and explore my sexuality and emotional attraction to women, and mostly so I wouldn't feel like I was living a lie. My husband had his one and only really big jerk moment and read that journal. We fought and argued and cried, and in the end, we agreed to give it another try as an open marriage. Then I could be with women and stay with him, and he could see other women too. That was 10 years ago. And now we have 3 children. Since then I have truly fallen in love with him. Just for me. Falling in love turned out to be a lot more about emotion than passion. And was a process that occurred over years. We still technically have an open marriage. But neither of us uses that prerogative anymore. I couldn't have asked for a better or happier relationship. If you are new to the channel. You can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then. Check another video. Bye for now.